and welcome to the sports box. The only opinion that matters. It's right here. I am Mike Galetta, a.k.a. Hamilton to Mike, along with my partner Brian, the Ranger of Tard, bringing you another solid special that you're just going to love and love and love. You didn't point today. What's going on? You know, I'm you just know? making sure you're not trying to hit me with this bucket. You're, you're feeling feel okay? What's going no, on? No, I'm, I'm afraid for my life, actually. I'm afraid for my whole life. Unbelievable. Baby. Today we talk about, you know, how to beat the birds and this week's opponent, the Seattle Seahawks. So back on the line for us, just like the beautiful guy that he is to come on for us and talk a little Seahawks, is our Seahawks affiliate, Tony Pacello. Tony! Hey, how's it going? All right, hey, we, 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 do we love talking Seahawks? You know, this week we do. This week sure. we love talking Seahawks, that's right. Let's, let's talk a little about the Hawks. Let's talk about the Eagles invading Seattle. Um, you talk a little bit about the Seahawks uh, to, to brief Tony if he doesn't know already. I'm sure he does. They go into New England, be a good, good New England team. Now they're going back home, a little home cook. And Seattle hasn't been the team, the dominant team they have been at home this week. But, Tony, I'll ask you, what do you think your opinion is? What's the main thing I think Seattle's going to have to do this week to beat the Eagles? Uh, block. Um, you know, if you watch the early games, Russell Wilson. You know, he, he didn't have any time to, to do anything, and the offense was just horrible, and, you know, that made the defense have to play, you know, two-thirds of the game because the offense was three and out. So I think that's going to be a big key if they can get some time to throw the ball and, and um, you know, make some plays. I, I You know, I feel good on the defense of end. I, I really just think that offense needs to quit. Yeah, I think, I think this uh, the matchup that we see, me and Brian, I think we're on the same page with it, is the defensive backs for Seattle. We're talking about Sherman, Cam Chancellor, um, you know, Ed Thomas back there, and these Eagle receivers who can't catch a cold right now because they're dropping everything. So that's the biggest matchup, the mismatch that we see. Is, is that the way you're looking at it too, Tony? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I like I said, I think our, uh, our defense, I mean, all the way around, I just think, you know, a rookie going into um, Century Link, it, you know, it you can't duplicate what goes on in that stadium. I mean, even in practice, I mean, you saw, you know, just just a glimpse of the Super Bowl, even in uh, Super Bowl 48, it was up in MetLife. I mean, the Seahawks fans showed up, and it was loud, and you saw what happened to Peyton, and, you know, he'd been around for, you know, 15 years at the time, so I just, I don't see Carson Wentz even, you know, being able to deal with that, and like you guys said, we got one of the best secondaries in football, and their receivers, you know, like you said, they couldn't catch a cold, right? <laughs> I just think, you know, the combination of that and our pass rush, you know, we like to get uh, get to the quarterback and pressure him into throwing, you know, uh, quicker than they want to. And, and with that back end and our linebackers, I just, I think that part, you know, that side of the ball is going to be money. I just, um, you know, the, the offense is what, what I think needs to, to, to work for us to win. Yeah, for sure, for sure, Terry. When you talk about the defense, I mean, if you ask me, all they need to do is show up. They're going to win this game because that's one of the best defenses in the league. I mean, they're 10th in, in yards allowed, uh, at least through the air, and, and that's really where the Eagles are, are most uh, – really their offense isn't very good at all because they can't run the ball very well, but they, they, their strength would be the passing game, you know, with, with Carson Wentz. Um, an interesting side note, I think, for Seattle this week is the very somewhat – actually pretty surprising cut of Kristen Michael. Now, Kristen Michael was the team's leading receiver, and I understand that C.J. Procise has taken on a bigger role in the last couple of weeks, and I know that Thomas Rawls is coming back from injury, but color me surprised here, Tony. I did not think they were going to cut Kristen Michael. I really felt that, you know, he finally had gotten it, that he was, you know, um, he was finally the guy for Pete Carroll, uh, but it looks like it's going to be Rawls and, to a lesser extent, Procise. What are you hearing as far as how involved we're going to see Thomas Rawls this week? Because, you know, again, the Eagles' defense is not bad. Um, while it's true that the, the Seahawks' offense through the air has improved in recent weeks, especially Doug Baldwin catching three touchdowns recently, uh, the, the running game has been up and down. They're 30th in the league in yards per game. Maybe that's what led to Michael being cut. But I guess I say that to say this. What do you expect out of Thomas Rawls this week? Um, I think he's going to be limited. Um, you know, it's, it's his first game back. I, from what everything I've read, uh, ProSize is going to going to be starting. Um, but you know, I, I would look for him to probably get maybe you know ten touches this week and then kind of work his way back. Um, I'm hoping he can bring some physical running, and, and I think that's a lot of why uh, Michael got cut. From what I was reading, Michael had an issue with sticking to the play. 
you know, the Seahawks would say, we want you to hit this hole on this run play, and he wouldn't trust it, and he would cut back. Yeah. And he tried to get home runs and go to the outside, and he really shied away from contact. I mean, even in that New Orleans game where Seattle lost, I remember that. Uh, I think it was in the fourth quarter, it was a big third down, and he he went to the outside and he had about two yards that he could have tried to fight for and he ran out of bounds without even being touched. And I mean, it's like, you know, you, you got to get those yards. you got to at least try to get those yards. you got to get the contact. And, you know, he the St. Louis game, he fumbled the ball um, on the last drive where, you know, Seattle lost the game 9-3, nine to, nine to three, but they had the ball and were driving. And, you know, if you've watched Russell Wilson over his career, you know, there's been many games where they haven't scored all game, and then somehow on that final drive, he gets a touchdown. So Michael fumbled that one away and made the Seattle lose. Seattle lost the game against uh, uh, the Saints, you know, by a couple points, and they really needed that first down. So when you start looking at that kind of stuff, and you look at, you know, Rawls coming back, and he's a physical runner, and, and the game the pros I've had, and he's dynamic. He can receive, he can um, run, he didn't shy away from contact. Um, you know, I think they'll be just fine. I, I think that had a lot to do with him being cut, though. Yeah. So, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Well, just st- staying on, on the the, uh, the the offense there, Tony. Now, um, Baldwin has come on in recent weeks. Had a really, really big game last week, uh, and obviously Jimmy Graham's renaissance continues, which I'm sure makes a lot of people in Seattle very, very happy. Um, my question, I think, on the offense is what are, what's to make of Tyler Lockett? I mean, Tyler Lockett was someone who you know, at least in the fantasy football circles, was deemed to be, like, the next one, the guy who was going to be that sexy pick to, you know, come out of nowhere and have a 1,000-yard year. I mean, he was creeping, creeping up and up and up in, in average draft positions as he got into the season. But from what I've seen, they just don't seem to be using him much at all. Is that, is that more Pete Carroll's offense, or is that more Tyrell Lockett's inefficiency? Um, I, I think more of the... He kind of had a leg injury. I, I don't know if it was a knee or an ankle, um, but I know that is, you know, he played through it. Um, so I know at the beginning of the season between him and Russell Wilson, both kind of hobbling around, I think that had a lot to do with it. Um, you know, last week he had a, a, a decent game. I think he ended up with, um, you know, 60-something yards, no touchdowns. But, I mean, it wasn't a horrible game. Um, and he had a couple good uh, uh, returns last week, I think, as well. I think he had a decent time and a kickoff return. So I, I, I think a lot of it just has to do with health. But, um, you know, you only, you know, another thing is, is you only have so many players that you can distribute the ball to. So Graham, you know, has a 100-yard receiving game, and Baldwin has a couple touchdowns, and Michael rushed, you know, back, you know, when we had him rush for a touchdown, you know, that, you know, Tyler Lockett kind of the odd man out, I guess, yeah. <laughs> at this point. It's fair point. I tell you, the last point for me is I think that um, what you're going to see in this game is Seattle go to and use a lot of Jimmy Graham because the linebackers for the Eagles, we're talking Nigel Bradham and uh, Michael Kendricks, they have a hard time defending the tight end position, and Jimmy Graham is a specimen out there. He's had starting to heat up a little bit. He's going to do well. But my biggest question to you is on a defensive line, questions are swirled about um, you know Michael Bennett playing this week. If he's out of the lineup for them, how are they going to generate some push to Carson Wentz? Because Carson Wentz, even though he's a rookie, he's going to have a hard time with that sound, is mobile. And they're going to have to contain him a little bit and keep him into the box. How do the Seahawks go about keeping him contained or, or moving him around a little bit without Bennett? Um, well, I mean, I still got Abel. Um, and then, you know, the second-year player, Frank Clark, he, he's been filling in pretty good. And that guy, I mean, he, he's a real talent. He really is. Um, you know, and... and you know, the combination of our uh, cornerbacks, I mean, if you don't have anybody to throw to, <laughs> you know, you're going to hold on to the ball longer, too, and that'll give us a little more time, I think, to get to them as well. Um, and, you know, Seattle's linebackers are great. I mean, we, I know in the beginning against Brady, we had a couple, um, you know, kind of uh, uh, little sneaky blitzes, basically, with our linebackers to where we were able to get to them and, and make them get rid of the ball a lot quicker than he wanted. And, um, I think actually that interception that he had was kind of like that. He, you know, he saw somebody coming and just chucked it in the air, hoping that you know the guy would get it, and it didn't work out. Um, so you know, I, I, I think just it, Seattle defense is so well balanced. We don't necessarily need the 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 front line to get to the quarterback like that. Because like I said, we have um, linebackers and we have cornerbacks and we have safeties that make it to where you have nowhere to get rid of the ball to, and that gives the line, you know another second or two to get to the quarterback. So I guess we're going to put you on the spot. I mean, uh, I, I'm 
been, not been shy. I think the Seahawks win this game. I don't think it's very hard. Mike, did you make a prediction? I did. I said the Seahawks as well. So we're, we're going to put you on the spot here, Tony. Will the Seahawks beat the Birds? Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I I, don't think the Cardinals are going to get a touchdown. Oh, it's not the Cardinals. Sorry, the Eagles are not <laughs> I was going to say, wrong show, Tony. <laughs> I, I, think, I think they may get a couple field goals. And I, I see Seattle probably putting up in the, the 20s. I'll say uh, 23 to 6. Wow. <laughs> my prediction. Wow, that's, a, yeah, bold that's a bold prediction. I was giving him a little more credit than that. I was going to say 28-17 or 28-14. Who, who, who yeah, am I? Yeah, I know. I, I mean, think we've got a pretty decent defense. Um, so, you know, that's, that's why I, I kind of think, you know, Seattle sometimes takes a little while to get going mm-hmm. um, as well. I know they looked pretty good last week against uh, uh, New England, but New, New England doesn't have anybody to rush you know, the quarterback, really. So, I mean, Wilson did have time. I think he's not going to have uh, as much time this week. Um, I think they'll have to scramble a little bit, improvise, um, you know, get rid of the ball a little bit quicker. So, I don't see him putting up the 31 like they did last week, but I like you see him in the mid-20s. I mean, as as a Cowboys fan, who am I to disagree with the Seahawks fan about it? Yeah. This team against the Eagles, I mm-hmm. I completely agree with Tony here. <laughs> yeah. By all means, I think we all should. I just think it's going to be interesting to see, like Tony said, a rookie quarterback in this environment in a place that has been compared to a jet engine sound. So that's going to be very interesting to see what Carson can do up in Seattle. Um, we will see. We're all in agreement. We all think the Seahawks are going to win this. So that's all the time we have for. How to Beat the Birds this week. I want to thank our Seattle correspondent, Tony Pacello, for coming on in such short notice and giving us a little bit of Hawks background. Tony, thank you very much, pal. Thank you, guys. No, not a problem. We, we love our Seahawks fans. We love everybody. Absolutely. We're just a happy grunch. So remember, we always got good stuff coming. And it's all over your social media, on Twitter, at Sports Box Show, on Facebook, on our Facebook page, and, of course, the YouTube channel, where everybody you know subscribes instead of, except for you. I don't know what the hell you're waiting for. Yeah. Because remember, at the sports box, watch well, this say first. Buckle up, Eagles fans, because the Hawks are coming. See, now you're now you're just taunting. No, I'm trying not to. Want to get flagged for that? <laughs> Five yard penalty. Five yard, maybe fifteen with the Eagles fans in this town. So remember, at the sports box, the only opinion that matters still right here. Thanks for watching, folks. See you. Don't forget to subscribe.